we're talking about this because any, any, any roadblock for us to become our best selves in this phase of life, we have to, obviously, we want to address because I think the first step to getting over that roadblock is knowing about it and becoming aware of it. How often do we remind you guys of that? If yeah. When you know better, you do better. Yeah. And awareness is step one. Yes. And so just being aware that, listen, if you are thinking about doing something different, going down a new path, trying something new, improving yourself, it could be career, it could be contribution. Maybe you want to get in better shape. Maybe you're doing a change with your health. Maybe you want to start eating better. Whatever that looks like, be prepared because you're probably going to get pushback. Yes. Even from people that you love and that are close to you. Very close to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the best solution, and again, we can't help you solve the problem if there's somebody who is just really just, it's a controlling side or they're really just not in a good place for themselves and they're so insecure or so scared or fearful living out of that fear that they just sort of might want to sabotage you. We can't help you with that. That's... Again, we can we can only control, keep things in our zone of control, right? right? So we're speaking to you. We're not speaking to changing the behavior of your loved ones. But the best solution, the thing that you can exert some action steps around would be to, with the people that you love the most, if it's possible for you guys to do this together, to grow together. I know that's not always possible, but even if it's a case of, Say you're a woman and you want to lose some weight and get in health, uh, get in shape, and maybe your husband's not so on board. You could still involve them somehow. You could ask them, well, what groceries do you want? What are some healthy foods that yeah. you like to eat? Let's get those in the house. Hey, would you like to take a walk with me? Um, you know, how would you feel about trying this new, you know, exercise class? Whatever right. that might be. If at all possible, get creative, exhaust all your options before you get them on board no. working. Yes, to get them on board. Yeah, that would be great. And you know what? I love the spouse example, but also, you know, that's a great way if a friend is sort of turning her nose up. It could just be because maybe she wants to do the same, but she hasn't had enough motivation or she needs, there are some of us that need the accountability there, right? And so that would be a great opportunity to bring them along bring them along. Mm -hmm. That's great. Get them excited about it, right? right? So your level of excitement for something will translate to another person. So if you can get really excited, try to get them excited about it as well. And just forecast the possibilities, especially in that situation with your friend. Like, hey, let's go. This could be so much fun. And, you know, we could go do this and we could pick out cute outfits and yeah. <laughs> Whatever it takes, right. get them excited, right? And list all of the benefits and the things that are in it for them. People, nobody likes change, right? And you, if you're in this place and this is really resonating with you because you've got people that are, you know, maybe resistant, just remember nobody likes change because the pain of what it's going to take mm -hmm. to get to that new place will often overcome the pleasure we might seek from that reward we might get from that outcome, right right but if you can tell them enough about that if you can speak to that rewards what they're going to get out of right it, then that often will help people get enough energy to make that catalytic move that and it's the first move that's the hardest right yeah. and then you get going and then you can keep each other accountable and keep yeah. each other on you have the accountability path. you're going to really have more fun doing it yeah it's great and that might not be the case for you you know, maybe you're not, maybe you want to do it by yourself just because you want to do it by yourself or there's nobody that you could bring along, but you're still getting pushed back in that scenario. I feel like some of this, what you just said still applies because give them a chance to, I think communication is key, you know? So if you have someone that's pushing back, give them the grace and at least the opportunity to hear you out and explain, you know, these are the benefits for me. This is why I'm doing this. This is how I'm going to do it. And, and that you know, past that, if they're still turning their nose up or being a pain, then it might be time to just disregard what they're saying, but at least give an opportunity to communicate with them why you're doing what you're doing and how it's going to play out and what, what, you know, what that's going to look like. Yes. And on that communication side, reassure them too. So you may have to do a little bit more, um, especially if there's some insecurities, like if there is a weight loss happening or it's a romantic relationship and worried about 
you know, a divide there. Yep. You want to reassure that person, you know, hey, I want to do this for us. I want to be healthy and live long and, and grow old mm -hmm. with you. You know, I want to um, just be a better wife for you or better mother for you, whoever the person in your life that you're speaking about, you know, speak to them in terms of that can help them feel reassured. And I love that point. And there was a book that I read last summer. I'm going to link it for you in the show notes because the... <laughs> It's not coming up for me right now. It was a French book and it ended up being in a, um, like international it's bestseller. Hilarious. Yeah. And it was cute. It was basically about this woman in our phase of life. That was the title that captured me uh, that wanted to use same things. We're talking about. Wanted to make changes. She ended up working like with this life coach and all the steps that she took. But anyway, she was really like doing an about face with at her job and in her life and cleaning up her home and getting healthier and exercising. And, and along the way, she was also becoming just more vibrant and happy and energetic. And her husband was giving her major pushback and she couldn't understand like, why wouldn't you be happy for me? I'm such a better person. And anyway, she was encouraged by her coach to communicate with him and, you know, talk through it. And turns out he ended up having to be very raw and vulnerable sharing where he was coming from. And what he said was, I'm so afraid that I'm not good enough for you anymore. Yes. Right. And it was heart wrenching in the book to read that because, you know, I'm just, I'm saying that because as we have this conversation, that might be some of the pushback that you're getting is somebody's own insecurities that you're not going to feel the same way about them, or you're going to outgrow them. That could be a spouse. That could be a family member. That could be a friend, but there's where you say reassure, like, and why communication is key. Because they're not probably going to willingly say that to you because it's a little embarrassing. But that's where the conversations there and the love and the grace for them will come in handy. That is so important. I think that right there, if you take anything out of this conversation, that should be it. If you're in in a situation, like I said, that's this something sound, sounding familiar, because. You know, and, and the book was a good illustration of that, but most husbands, if we're talking about husbands, yeah. aren't going to say that out loud, right? No. But you just don't She had to really, like, I think it, in the book, they ended up in this fight because yeah. it was like, why aren't you yeah. happy for me? And they went back and forth. But don't accept what's happening on surface level. I think yeah. it can be really easy for us to go to our girlfriends and be like, he doesn't want me to right. do this and blah, blah, blah. And he's just controlling me or this or that. At the heart of all of those types of situations is usually somebody who's scared mm -hmm. or hurt or, or feeling rejected mm -hmm. or feeling insecure. Mm -hmm. And if you can put yourself in those shoes and know what you need in those situations, you need reassurance. Yeah. You need love. Absolutely. You need grace. Uh, yeah. Right. That's why communication is key. The communication and the reassurance. So right. Good. And you may be listening, thinking, why, why do I have to do that? Like, why do I have to put myself you out? Be explaining myself. I'm bettering myself. It's for me. It's not for anyone else. Well, I, I think my answer to that would be we, we, love, we love the people in our life, whoever that is, our friends, our spouse, our whatever. Then we want to extend the grace. You know, we want, it's going to, wherever you're going in your life, wherever you're trying to grow or head to, if you can have people that are cheering you on and you need to do a little work to get to that place, it's going to be that much more sweet when you get there. Totally. And if we were talking to that person, we would tell them the same thing we're telling you, which is do, you know, right. You're the person in control, but you, we can't, I think when the, such a source of frustration comes from when we're just sitting and complaining about somebody else's behavior, yeah. when we have absolutely no control over what they do, we can Agreed. only do what we do and make ourselves better. Um, we can talk.